Buenas tardes. So this uh, afternoon we will have our conversations and the minister's keynote speech in English. So I will change to English now. Your Excellency Camina Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica. Ambassador Reina Torres, Director General for Latin America and the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience. This year, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the governments of Jamaica and Mexico. It has been a fruitful relation and it has grown in importance in the last 10 years. In Mexico, we are fully aware of the relevance of the Caribbean as a strategic area and as our third frontier. Indeed, the government of President Peña Nieto has identified as a priority the strengthening of our presence in the region as well as the nurturing of bilateral links with our Caribbean neighbors. We are pursuing a long-term relationship based on political dialogue, mutual understanding, scientific and technical cooperation, as well as the joint solution to common problems such as climate change, natural disasters, and improved connectivity. Within this approach, Jamaica plays a central role as a country with which Mexico has the most institutionalized relationship in the Commonwealth Caribbean. Jamaica is one of the three countries in the area, along with Cuba and the Dominican Republic, that has a binational program with Mexico. The eighth meeting of the Jamaica-Mexico Permanent Binational Commission that has just concluded and with good results, as you all know, is part and parcel of such program and testifies the rich exchange of points of view that both countries cherish. In economic terms, the relationship between Mexico and Jamaica is growing. The bilateral trade has increased 93% over the last 10 years, and also Mexican investment, direct investment in the island has gained force becoming the second largest resort investor in the country. It is along this spirit of cooperation and coming closer that the Mexican Ministry of Foreign Affairs recently launched the Jamaica Week during which multiple commemorative activities were organized. It has been a great opportunity to publicize Jamaica's rich cultural heritage among the Mexican public. With the different activities of the Jamaica Week, the Instituto Matias Romero had the honor of hosting, in collaboration with UNAM and the Instituto Matias Romero, a round table that was called Jamaica, the construction of a Caribbean nation. Other cultural activities, like the Reggae Roots exhibitions presented at UNAM, as well as several lectures delivered on Jamaica's historical and cultural identity, and also a performance by the Mexican Rastafarian Reggae Group were part of these initiatives. In this framework, it has uh, been uh, a great honor to learn that Minister Johnson was coming to the Instituto Matias Romero this afternoon. She will give a keynote speech entitled Mexico and Jamaica, Perspectives for the Bilateral Relationship. Minister Johnson holds a Master of Laws from the London School of Economics and Political Science. Also, she holds a Bachelor of Laws from the University of the West Indies, Cape Hill, and a BA in French and International Relations from the University of the West Indies, Mona. She also completed stu studies of legal and diplomatic French at Guadeloupe and as well uh, a course on negotiation at the Harvard Law School professional program in Boston, Massachusetts. Among other responsibilities, Minister Johnson has been appointed as government senator, opposition senator with responsibility of opposition whip and spokesperson on education and youth on February 2015. The minister has a keen interest in governance, education, youth, and gender affairs. She is highly committed to public service and volunteerism, and has served as a member of the advisory board of the ILEAD Education Reform Project sponsored by the Jamaica National Foundation, and has managed several philanthropic projects of the Land Foundation. Without further ado, I have the honor of giving you the floor, Minister. Embajadora Reina 
Torres, Director General for Latin America and the Caribbean, Dr. Natalia Santalamacchia, Director General for the Instituto Matias Romero, Excelencias, Señoras y Señores, Buenas Tardes. Estoy encantada de visitar la hermosa e histórica Ciudad de México para la octava reunión de la Comisión Binacional Jamaica-México. Asimismo, me alegra la ocasión para dirigirme a los presentes aquí en el Instituto Matías Romero. Discúlpenme por no poder continuar en español. <laughs> It is significant, ladies and gentlemen, that the meeting of our binational commission is being held in 2016, the year which marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries. I am especially grateful to my colleague, Foreign Secretary Claudia Ruiz Massieu, the officials of the Mexican Foreign Ministry, and all those with whom we have interacted for the warm welcome and gracious hospitality which have been extended to me and to members of the Jamaican delegation throughout this much anticipated visit to the United Mexican States. I must also express my gratitude to the Institute for its stellar role in providing training to our regional diplomats from which many countries, including Jamaica, have benefited. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, official relations between Jamaica and Mexico can be traced back at least to the 1880s, when Mexico established a consular post in Kingston. This, no doubt, would have been in response to the movement of goods and people between our two countries, underscoring the fact that our geographical proximity as states make us natural partners in many senses. As some would suggest, the Caribbean Sea is a powerful elixir. Diplomatic relations between our two countries were established formally in 1966, just four years after Jamaica became an independent nation. Since then, and over the past 50 years, our ties of friendship and cooperation have been both vibrant and valuable, characterized by a high degree of interaction at the bilateral, regional, and multilateral levels. The strength of our bilateral relations is most evident in the fact that we maintain resident diplomatic missions in our respective capitals and have signed numerous co cooperation agreements across a spectrum of areas from which we have derived mutual benefit. Our ties have also been nurtured by high-level visits on both sides. The official visit by the President of Mexico to Jamaica in 2005 gave new impetus to the process of engagement Additionally, we have engaged visits at the level of foreign ministers in the context of our binational commissions, and the Subsecretaria Flores Liera attended Jamaica for a working visit just last year. We must also acknowledge the significant bonds of friendship created by traditional affinities in Caribbean Mexico, where people-to-people -people exchanges have resulted in projects like the Feria de, de Culturas del Caribe, held for some 40 years in the state of Quintana Roo. The Chetumal Reggae Fest, now in its second edition, further contributes to the diversification of cultural experiences and deepens the mutual knowledge and understanding of us as neighbors. The renewed and positive involvement of the Mexican private sector in Jamaica has promoted yet another tier of contacts between our peoples. We are particularly pleased at the heightened Mexican interest and investment in Jamaica which operates sorry, with companies such as the Grupo Aeroportario del Pacifico, which operates our Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay on the North Coast, Cementos de Mexico, Carisma Resorts, and other companies which have significant interest in Jamaica's hotel sector. These entrepreneurial projects will undoubtedly serve as a catalyst for increasing the number of Mexicans to see Jamaica as a destination for both business and tourism. It is certainly also a great compliment to us that the name Apleton, or Signal Rum, rolled so easily off the tongue of Mexican peoples, and that our entertainers perform regularly to great acclaim in various Mexican cities and resorts. That recognition represents a great endorsement of brand Jamaica. At the same time, 
The strength of the relationship between Mexico and Jamaica is not confined to our bilateral ties. Both countries are committed to regional integration demonstrated by our common membership of various integration mechanisms. There is a sound architecture for regional cooperation between our countries through the vehicles of the CARICOM Mexico Joint Commission, the Association of Caribbean States, the Community of Latin American and Caribbean States, CELAC, whose predecessor, the Rio Group, was expertly led by Mexico, and of course, the Organization of American States, among others. These mechanisms have allowed us to promote, in tandem with our regional and hemispheric neighbors, collective solutions to our most pressing political, social, economic, and environmental issues of our time. Yet, while we highly value these long-standing regional and hemispheric, hemispheric arrangements and remain committed to their development, we're also witnessing a particularly exciting time in the history of the Northern and Western Caribbean, where certain momentous developments are emerging in close geographic proximity to both our shores. I refer in particular to the normalization of relations between the USA and Cuba, as well as the expansion of the Panama Canal, the inauguration of which will be held in the latter part of next month in Panama. These developments will have a significant impact on the development dynamics in our Caribbean space and open new horizons for trade, investment, and cooperation in the interests of our collective progress and prosperity. Based on these developments and other regional and global trends, the government of Jamaica is firmly of the view that the time is ripe to maximize the potential of the North and Northwest Caribbean to constitute a geopolitical and economic pole that can be a catalyst for the further integration and sustainable development of the countries that belong to this space and serve as an engine of growth for the entire Caribbean basin. We believe that in accordance with the principles of variable de geometry, there is scope for deeper integration among particular groups of countries within the framework of a single regional integration scheme. In the case of Jamaica, our geographic location makes it a natural fit for us to seek to move ahead at a fast pace in terms of integration, trade, and development with the countries that share the northern and western corners of the Caribbean basin. It is our view that increased focus on economic cooperation within that geographic area would do no harm to larger efforts to move the entire hemisphere towards the shared goals of peace and development. We hope to revine, refine these proposals in the weeks and months ahead and look forward to further discussion of our ideas with countries such as Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, Panama, Colombia, and countries of Central America with which we share maritime borders. In pursuing these initiatives, Jamaica will continue to be guided by the principles that have long defined our foreign policy and relations since our independence in 1962. These principles are based on the Charter of the United Nations and include an adherence to multilateral cooperation to maintain international peace and security, the development of friendly relations among nations based on respect for the principles of equal rights and self-determination of peoples, respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, the sovereign equality of states, the peaceful settlement of international disputes, refraining from the threat or use of force against ter the territorial integrity or political independence of any state, and good neighborliness. We are encouraged by the fact that these principles are shared by Mexico and by other peace-loving nations in our region. Based on the general principle of seating by alphabetical order at multilateral meetings, Jamaica and Mexico are often neighbors at various diplomatic tables. Particularly in our region and hemisphere, this is how it works. This happy coincidence makes it natural for us to confer frequently with each other and to support each other on issues of fundamental importance to all respective countries. Jamaica recognizes the strength and effectiveness of Mexico's diplomacy 
and regards Mexico as a valuable reference point in regional, hemispheric, and global affairs. Consequently, we have often sought to ensure that we have the benefit of your country's views and positions whenever action is being pursued in a regional or international stage. We also commend the highly constructive, reasoned, and balanced role that Mexico plays in international affairs, both for your own advancement as well as in the interest of others. For example, Mexico's influence in the G20 gives voice and character to a balanced viewpoint on economic issues affecting small islands, small developing states, such as Jamaica, especially as it relates to our shared position as middle-income countries with all the negative implications associated with that classification. Additionally, over many years, Mexico has assumed a leadership within the United Nations systems on issues affecting countries like ours dispro disproportionately, such as the world drug problem. We look forward to exploring synergies in this regard as we each fight crime domestically and navigate the international architecture within the UN system. We note also that Mexico has engaged consistently with human rights and other social issues with which our countries have found common cause. This strength of purpose is also demonstrated in the drive to implement the world's sustainable development goals. And Jamaica is proud to have worked along countries like Mexico towards adopting this important global roadmap. In that regard, Mexico's hosting of the 36th session of ECLAC to be convened in the coming days will be important for the formulation of common positions, including on the establishment of a forum to oversee the implementation of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. We further commend Mexico for the sterling contribution it has made to the development of international law and for the many outstanding international jurists it has produced. Mexico is now the perennial host to the International Law Week activities at the United Nations. Mexico's strong advocacy on behalf of this region has made a significant contribution to the cementing of historic agreements such as the Treaty of Tlatelolco I don't know if I got that right, in the defense of the global disarmament agenda. For our part, and despite our relatively small size and population, Jamaica has also consistently played a leading role in international affairs. In the area of human rights, we struck an early note after our independence in having the General Assembly agree to the designation of a special year devoted to those issues. In that context, we were among the first to take action against the abhorrent apartheid regime in South Africa. As a result of the adoption of the Law of the Sea Convention in Jamaica in 1982, Jamaica has also for the last 22 years been host to the International Seabed Authority. As a small island developing state, our country has been firm and unwavering in its defense of the interests of this group of countries on issues ranging from debt to climate change and natural disasters, drawing on international attention to our particular vulnerability and the imperative of giving special attention to those challenges to our development goals. Our foreign policy, as a reflection of our domestic priorities, speaks to the fact that we are first and foremost a country of strong democratic principles invested in our greatest resource, our people. On a most encouraging note, Brand Jamaica has been burnished by the stellar performance of our athletes on the world stage and by the global embrace of Jamaica's musical gift to the world in the genre of reggae. Many of our nationals have served the international community well in the positions of influence they've assumed within the United Nations Civil Service and within the organs and intergovernmental bodies of that organization. A firm believer in multila multilateralism, Jamaica remains fully supportive of the many international organizations that seek to harness collective resources to address the challenges of an ever-changing global landscape. For that reason, we have sought to ensure that these institutions operate on a democratic, transparent, and equitable principles, even as we lament that in some noteworthy situations, this remains a work in progress. This, Jamaica, this year, Jamaica celebrates the 72nd anniversary of full adult suffrage. 
in the last 50 or 54 years since independence, we have held 13 general elections. I'm proud to be a part of a new political administration led by the most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister, following elections held in late February of this year. His election signals a generational change in Jamaican politics, since he is the first Jamaican Prime Minister born after our independence in 1962. I have heard that the Foreign Minister shares this distinction and that she is also the first woman to have been appointed to that post, but this is hearsay. <laughs> the mission of the Government of Jamaica is to consolidate and further advance the tremendous political achievements of which our small nation can be justly proud. At this juncture in our history, our primary focus is to generate robust economic growth and in that context to facilitate sustained and sustainable job creation and employment for every Jamaican who is able and who wants to work. In the words of our Prime Minister, in order to keep Jamaica on the path of continuous improvement, we must foster healthy, educated, and socially well-adapted citizens. We are focused on both GDP, gross domestic product, and GWB, general well-being. For this reason, I am delighted that on this occasion, on this visit to Mexico, our two countries have signed, signed agreements covering general cooperation, educational, cultural, technical, and scientific, as well as agreements in respect of fiscal cooperation. These bilateral initiatives will complement other existing agreements between Mexico and the member states of the Caribbean community, covering technical cooperation in health, food security, and the environment, as well as for the development of regional trade and transportation infrastructure. It is worthy of special note that regional economic progress has benefited from the paradigm shifting agreement in energy cooperation embodied in the historic 1980 San Jose Accord advanced jointly by Mexico and Venezuela. This was created to facilitate the supply of petroleum products on terms that reduce the oil import burden on non-oil producing countries, developing nations of the Caribbean and Central America. The proceeds of this cooperation agreement with Mexico were instrumental in advancing critical aspects of Jamaica's socioeconomic development, particularly in the 1980s and 90s. More recently, keeping faith with the principles of that early San Jose initiati initiative, and within the context of CARICOM and the ACS, Mexico has intensified its focus, especially since 2014, with strategic cooperation on issues such as trade facilitation and comprehensive disaster risk management, made feasible through the reinvigorated Mesoamerica Fund and the Caribbean Infrastructure Development Fund. Through the Mesoamerica Fund, Mexico's specific response to Caribbean vulnerability to natural disasters has resulted in a financial contribution to the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Fund to expand coverage and reduce the cost of insurance premiums. This common infrastructure development fund has already financed development projects valued at approximately 17 United States, million United States dollars in Haiti, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Jamaica. In the area of environmental protection through waste disposal management, Jamaica is grateful for the grant of US $1.8 million for the Riverton City Rehabilitation Project expected to be completed in September, September of this year. Jamaica acknowledges the tremendous value of these projects that support our sustainable development agenda in critical areas. These activities have emanated from the development dialogue firmly established in 2010 and reaffirmed in the Merida Summit of 2014. Notably, the approved and expanded program of scientific technical cooperation of 2014-2015 emphasizes training in public health management and the use of statistics for planning and implementing public policies. On the economic front, it facilitates the incubation of technology-based companies, as well as the strengthening of food security through the generation of specific agricultural projects to strengthen and enhance production capacity 
through the vehicles of Mexico's Secretariat of Agriculture, Livestock, Rural Development, Fisheries and Food, and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. Significantly, it also promotes, promotes the teaching of Spanish, and in that regard, I promise sincerely to build on my budding efforts exhibited at the start of my presentation. <laughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica and Mexico are inextricably linked by geography, history, culture, as well as our shared vision for peace and prosperity for our two countries. We're both charting our course for development and prosperity in a global environment that is both challenging and replete with opportunities which are yet untapped. The evidence of past developments makes it clear that we are most likely to reap success for ourselves and for each other when we take care of and share our common Caribbean space, and even more so when we bequeath it to our children in a better state than we inherited it from our forebearers. To borrow a concept from the law of the sea, our Caribbean, and indeed our global environment are the common heritage of mankind. In that regard, we look forward to Mexico's participation in the next General Assembly of the International Seabed Authority, which will convene in Kingston in July of this year. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am fully confident that the vibrant and valued relations between Jamaica and Mexico will forge an even stronger partnership in the ensuing years to effectively influence decision-making at all levels so that we can harness the best development achievements for the benefit of our respective peoples. Viva Mexico, viva Jamaica. Muchas gracias. Thank you for reminding us about the, the, the achievements that Mexico and Jamaica have produced for the global governance, for the regional governance, for international relations and global affairs. And thank you also for, for sharing the results of our mutual projects of cooperation. It has been a great honor to listen to your speech. And I also want to thank Ambassador Reina Torres for her presence here this afternoon in this great event. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And of course, thank you to you all for your presence this afternoon. And uh, well, uh, gracias a todos. <laughs>
which is a meeting of foreign ministers of CARICOM, which took place in St. Vincent and the Grenadines just last week. Uh, the, the fact is that the, while there has been discussion of agreement uh, and further cooperation in respect of trade, that this has not received the level of focus which it should have. And the foreign ministers agreed that this was a matter that needed to be adjusted and that attention needed to, well, let me not say attention, let me say it needed to be placed, it needs to be placed specifically on the agenda of COTED, of the next COTED meeting, it's specifically in respect of trade and economic development. So thank you for that question. And it, coincidentally, it was just discussed last week. So thank you. question and maybe you can ask your government. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thank you very much. I thank you for not only coming and sharing your, your time with us, but for uh, being engaged with the process and, and for your questions. Uh, in respect of Spanish training, training is occurring on more than one level. And we are in fact not, we have not yet fully concretized the extent of our training because um, the discussions today, even, were so inspirational and a little expansionist because we, um, around the table, feel so excited about the prospects of additional training. So we have existing projects which teach Spanish as a second language at the primary and secondary level. But we are also engaging in training of teachers who will be trained to teach Spanish as a second language. And um, certainly, as we've been discussing, that trade is, uh, well, one of the barriers to trade, one of the non-carried barriers to trade is language. And as we look to expand our commercial uh, relationships and as we look to expand our cultural relationships, language exchange must be a big part of that. So I want to assure you that the Jamaican government and the Mexican government have, have this at the top of the agenda and we are looking at how best to rationalize our programs in this respect. In respect of Riverton, uh, it's an excellent project, and uh, as Ambassador advised today, we, they've, they've actually started paving at this point. And uh, we do anticipate, as you do, that the <coughs> renovation of this road will itself elevate um, access to resources for the, the impoverished community that supports it, or that surrounds it. Uh, in respect of additional projects for Riverton, the government of Jamaica is committed to changing the nature of the dump, which it is, to a landfill. We are uh, approaching projects in respect of waste to energy, which should allow for increased uh, employment opportunities of young, unskilled um, boys and girls in the community. Uh, we also expect that to produce economic opportunities for investment. And we are also seeking to uh, expand opportunities for recycling in the based on, on use of the area. And certainly, having proper access, egress and ingress to the area is going to support us massively. So as stated earlier, Ambassador and Representatives of the Government of Mexico, Jamaica is most grateful for this contribution and we expect it to make significant change. So thank you very much for your questions. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I'm take advantage of the uh, privilege of having you here and of uh, the fact that this is my first week in charge of this uh, agenda. So, um, what would you say would be a good um, set of actions or a good strategy for us to engage more closely with the Caribbean as a region in general? We've mentioned, you've heard our minister saying that 
uh, our relationship with Jamaica is strategic in terms of, of uh, uh, our engagement with the region. Um, what else should we be talking about? What should be the common thread of, of a, a re-energized engagement of Mexico with the Caribbean? and a special welcome to Ambassador Torres because she is the only person I suspect in the room who is newer at their job than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I feel a particular affinity uh, with her and, and, um, and welcome the opportunity to work with her further in the future as she is now responsible for the area in which uh, Jamaica falls. Uh, in respect of, of what we should be doing to expand the relationship with Jamaica, I would say everything we're doing now. Everything we spoke about today. Today we spoke about cooperation at every level. And if I were to disaggregate into two main pillars, I would say governmental and non-governmental. Because certainly, private sector is the engine of so much. And the increased investment which we are currently experiencing from Mexican private sector members is so inspiring and so supportive of our development agenda that it, I believe it will be the springboard together with the educational and technical cooperation for increased involvement between our two countries. Because it's when we have more people that speak the language, it's when we have more hotels uh, which are being built by Mexican investors, which are being marketed by Mexican investors, and which have Mexican tourists coming to stay, that we will also be looking at increasing our, our, our airlift, that we'll be looking at multi-destinational tourism, as we've already been discussing between our Minister of Tourism and with other members of the uh, Mexican government to see how we can ensure that we have the critical mass to ensure that it makes good economic sense for airlines to ensure that there are direct lines of transportation between countries such as Mexico and Jamaica, as well as more, uh, well, more distant locations uh, where we all can benefit as regions in respect of, um, of tourist destinations. Uh, increase of teaching and learning the Spanish language. Uh, the increase in ensuring that our cultures are shared, understood, and valued by each other. Uh, Mexicans love for reggae. Uh, tonight I'm going to the Ballet for Glorico and I am over the moon. <laughs> and, um, and I will share with you that in 1969, my parents honeymooned here, and they went to the Ballet for Glorico. And we spoke, and we, have, we spoke as, as a, when I was a child, and we spoke recently about how well Mexico has done in terms of not only preserving its heritage, but in, I don't want to call it commercializing because it, it doesn't give it the value and the, the, the elegance that it deserves, but it is ensuring that there's a product that's available for persons who visit Mexico to know that three days a week, you can find the Valle Folklorico, which is the most excellent presentation of Mexican traditional dance from all of the relevant states and all of the beauty and joy that comes with dance, right here, 20 minutes around the corner. And when I think of my country, and I think of our dance and our cultures, I want to think, how can we learn from Mexico and from projects like the Valle Folklorico? How can we have a project where when, uh, you know, the visitors come and stay at Carisma Resorts, they drive on the highway and come and visit our National Dance Theatre Company or any other National Dance Theatre Company, having had the benefit of technical assistance from Mexico as to how to create these cultural products, these joyous cultural preservations of our very beings. I, um, when I think about those things, I just say, let's, let's go do it, <laughs> you know? Um, as, as you maybe can tell, and as uh, uh, Ambassador Torres was a part of uh, our, many of our discussions today, and, and she will share that they were all very exciting and, um, and very focused on projects which make sense, and make sense for both our governments and both of our peoples. 
So we're committed to working, to making sure that we follow up on these agreements so that we don't just sign, take a few pictures, and then check back in two years. We actually have a follow-up mechanism that we've agreed to ensure that we are doing business, we are cooperating, we are ensuring that our science grows together, our educational institutions grow together, our agriculture grows together, and that together, Jamaica and Mexico will be in partnership, prosperous. prosperous. Uh, about Mexican culture, and I, I, I'm sure that you will enjoy tonight your visit to Bellas Artes. I, I'm sure it will be a great experience. But thank you for that enthusiasm, and uh, we're we, we, we're uh, able to take a last third question. If there's someone in the audience that still has something to, yes, please, sir. question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's an excellent question and I, and I very much appreciate it. Um, so you asked several. That's the trick. Um, in respect of what came out of the last diaspora conference, uh, I believe not enough. We have uh, uh, an an impressive series of actions which need to be taken, but we have not had enough implementation of the great ideas that came out of it. So um, that is a project that we're working on, looking at how to implement, because um, the fact is that the organs charged with the conference simply didn't have the resources for implementation of some of the lofty ideas that were proposed and agreed to at that conference. That's my honest answer in respect of uh, the conference itself. In respect of the complexity of, a di of our diaspora, you have hit the nail on the head. And the irony is that we are um, actually looking to Mexico as one of the countries for advice on how you address and engage with your diaspora, specifically in respect of voting. Uh, one of the uh, aspects of increased engagement which Prime Minister Holness, then opposition uh, leader, Wholeness had indicated that we would look at as an administration were we elected, would be increased, increased political engagement by virtue of allowing a vote. Um, this has actually proved to be quite a controversial issue because certainly if you have a population which is pretty much equivalent to your existing resident population, then this raises questions about your electoral engagement and uh, certainly your understanding, your polling, um, how do you, and, and the actual understanding of the political realities uh, in country, it raises, it has raised a great dis discussion, a great deal of discussion, both at home and within the diaspora. Um, but what we have done is we've said that we will engage in a consultative process not only having asked our mission, such as Ambassador Grant Griffiths, to liaise with the government of Mexico to understand the framework which you implement to enable voting by your diaspora, um, the learnings which you may have experienced when it was just implemented and how it operates now. Uh, but we've also asked that that be executed by, I think it's about five other countries which have diaspora voting. We then intend to place the findings uh, before a joint select committee of parliament, which will be charged with reviewing uh, a few matters related to the diaspora, including the national policy in respect of diaspora engagement, and uh, engaging by means of technology, etc., having diaspora contribute to that, um, well, to that process, to see if it is indeed something which we should do um, perhaps the decision will be no, but perhaps it will be yes, and if so, we want to ensure that we get it right. 
and Mexico is one of the countries we're engaging with to make our best efforts in that regard. So thank you. Well, I guess, uh, well, thank you, Minister, very much for agreeing to, to have this conversation. I think it added a, a great deal to, to your keynote speech. We've learned a lot this afternoon, and uh, the Instituto Matias Romero is very proud that you visited us. Thank you so much. Truly. Thank you so much, and thank you today.